Okay, right, so um, I need to record this for myself. Hmm. This is how my mind works. I need to somehow extravert my thoughts, my ideas, in order for me to somehow understand my ideas, if that makes sense. Uh, it's like it's not enough for me, for my brain or for my mind to actually understand and see the things that happen inside of me. I need to somehow put them in the outside of myself and then they are remembered, then they are understood. This is how my brain works. So, I need to record this. And Okay, so this one. Mm, where do I pick it up from? Okay, so this one is related to Oh my god, yeah. Oh my god, okay. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. It's so simple yet so terribly incredible. How this works. So It's about reality and how reality is perceived. This physical reality here. This physical reality here, it's only a construct of the mind. I mean, that is not entirely correct. <laughs> the physical reality in and of itself is not a, doesn't seem to be a construct of the human mind. But the human mind... Oh my god. The human mind in looks at this physical reality, at this natural reality that exists before our eyes, that exists outside and inside of us as well. And it looks as at it, but it thinks it sees something else than what it actually is in front of uh, in front of our eyes. So our mind constructs a secondary reality and imposes that mental reality over the physical natural reality that happens before our eyes. And our mind is so powerful, it's so amazingly powerful that it can actually pretend it is actually seeing what the mind wants to see. It, act it can actually our mind is so powerful that if we believe something is real then the mind can distort our perceptions, our physical senses, our what our eyes see, what our ears hear, what our hands touch, in order to make that thing that we believe, in order to make that thing feel real. So this is the power of the mind. So for example, if you, if you think someone in your life is a jerk if you have attributed that meaning to a certain person or to a certain situation or to a job or to then your mind will make will find all the proofs will 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 create an entire reality to show you that that person is a jerk will will even distort your senses your physical senses i mean you will even it's able to even create a reality it creates perceptions, I mean, not reality. The mind cannot create reality, but it can alter perceptions. It can alter your perceptions of reality so that you can think you see something that is actually not there. You think you see a jerk when it's actually maybe a just a random person doing some random things. And the thing that I wanted to 
explore is the this thing with the mind and the soul so the soul the soul is the creator the soul is the one who fabulates who imagines <laughs> all these stories about what reality is the soul is the creator this is the infinite pool of creation this is the infinite pool of consciousness the soul this is the infinite ocean of life the soul so the soul is a freaking creator and it constantly creates meanings and it creates stories and then the mind takes those stories and it transforms them into beliefs oh my god and the, the thing is that if if one of those wishes the soul has if one of those imaginations or creations that the soul creates <laughs> reaches the mind oh my god that's that's mm, it it gets like the mind it gets con converted into a belief, into a pattern within the mind and once that pa pattern, once that belief is there within the mind oh my god, the mind will do everything like has so much, many tools to distort reality and our own perception to show us that that belief is true so whatever the soul wishes, the mind makes happen the mind, not it doesn't make it happen, actually it's just distorts our perceptions in order to appear that that is true so whatever the soul wants the, the mind makes it real and I hear very very few, very few people talking about the soul and how the energy of the soul is so important impactful for our for the human experience as we know it right now so the majority of people that I personally found during these years like maybe 10 15 years in this let's say going through what could be called like spirituality they they mainly talk about either the mind either they skip from the mind directly to awareness but it's like I rarely see anybody or there I rarely rarely see somebody talking about the soul level which is a middle level between our human mind the one that has all this mental chatter and patterns and beliefs and and then awareness which is the higher aspect of ourselves there, between these two layers, between these two states, I, there is a middle layer, the middle man, which I find it incredibly, it's like, it's like incredibly important. It's like you can't go, I, 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 I don't know how people think that they can skip that middle man. It's like that middle man, the soul, is like, the one who freaking <laughs> creates this entire distortion of reality the, the energy for this entire distorted reality comes from this soul the soul freaking projects the energy, the wish it's a powerful will, it's a powerful wish that this, to, this, to experience this distorted reality in, in this way and then that wish is taken by the mind that wish comes into a wave comes as a wave that energy comes as in the form of a wave so it's an analog type of signal let's say it's a wave and then the mind ta takes that wave and converts that wave into a particle it converts it into a stable static meaning and that meaning oh my god that meaning 
He's dead. Stored. Stored within the mind real. In the form of a pattern, a belief, a notion, an idea. And once that meaning, that wave, that wish, that powerful intent, that powerful desire of the soul, that powerful life energy that comes from the soul, is stored within the mind in the form of a pattern, in the form of a particle, in the form of a digital particle, a digital signal, that pattern remains in the, in the mind and is stored within the mind <laughs> and the mind then uses that those patterns as its fuel as its energy source to project this entire reality So we only see our mental patterns. We look at the exterior reality, we think we see reality, but we only see our mental patterns displayed. For sure, they are not our individual mental patterns because we haven't created these patterns. We haven't been aware when our soul has created this powerful wave, this powerful wish, this powerful energy to experience this thing. We haven't been there consciously aware of this. So somehow we could like it would be more fair to say that we inherited this we inherited this human structure that includes a body a mind a soul as the lower functions as the lower functions of the system and then it includes a awareness which is the pure heart and then it includes some beingness or something even higher than awareness which is i call that beingness the pure mind could be associated but it's something completely different than a mi mind as we know it it's it's more likely to be a higher body than a mind but anyway so The soul <laughs> creates this powerful surge of energy and that energy is taken by our, our human mind, mind and converted convert, convert convert into, into patterns, pattern, into digital, digital signals, signals, into meanings, into notions and concepts. And once those notions are created, they are they stick within the mind, they are stored in within the mind, they, they, they just don't go away that fast. So we, it's like we inherited this human body and with this human soul, it's like inheriting somehow the mind and the soul of the cosmos itself. This is not our soul, this is not our mind. It's the mind and the soul of the cosmos itself. It's its own stories, its own patterns. When a child, a baby human is born on earth, it's like it's it takes on the persona of this cosmos. It takes on the mind and the soul of this cosmos, like a clothing in a way. So it takes on all the patterns that have ever been created since the beginning of time. It takes on all the energies that were created since the beginning of time by the soul. So a baby human, when it is born, it's f like first it's this pure awareness, this pure spirit or this pure heart, which has no energy to it yet not in the soul sense of the word or it has no patterns yet but slowly this soul of the cosmos here it slowly attaches itself it's like attaching like something like a parasite in a way really this is how it feels it's like a like a parasite that like a disclenched parasitic thing that attaches to this pure heart 
and start sucking the awareness of that heart and start sucking the awareness within the realm of the soul and uses that awareness uses that pure energy because the heart is a source of pure energy but it's a different energy than the soul the energy of the heart is not there for creating imaginations or for creating creations with it's a different type of energy of life itself it's it's the energy of life itself that sustains everything not create not only uh, imaginary creations that the soul can create and bring into existence and manifest it's 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 the energy it's the essence of life itself that's the pure heart but the soul so it really this is how it seems it seems like this parasitic thing that attaches to the heart and then sucks that energy from the heart that pure energy of life itself it sucks it and it uses it as its own fuel to create imaginations and creations with it and then the soul uh, the soul and this, this this soul and this human mind is like they seem like one and the same entity it's like the same entity that this parasitic thing that has two ends to it it's, it has the, the end of the soul and the end of the mind so then they work together like one single unit so then the energy the soul then takes the energy from the pure heart that pure energy of life it takes that energy and uses that energy converts it into soul energy and soul energy is the energy to create imaginations and creations and manifestations the soul is the creator and uses that pure energy of the heart converts it into soul energy and then uses that energy th that soul energy and propagates it's like it emanates that powerful soul energy and that soul energy is like of a magnitude unimaginable magnitude it's it's like a it's like not even like the concept of an atomic bomb it's something incredibly powerful incredibly of a magnitude unimaginable this soul when it has a wish this soul is the wish of the soul the wishes of the soul are so enormously powerful they are magnetic it, it's like the most powerful magnetic force in the cosmos so then the soul emits this powerful magnetic force this powerful wish this powerful will that contains the storyline for an, a new imagination for a creation but this storyline it's first in in an unmanifested form it's in the form of energy first it's not yet a manifested reality it's 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 the energy form what later becomes a manifested reality so it's just the potential it's incredibly powerful <laughs> the soul the potentials the soul emanates and creates in the form of these magnetic waves that it emulates and it, it emanates forward it propagates it's like a pulse it's like pulsing it them out um and then the mind this human mind this lower mind or secondary mind or virtual mind whatever we could call it takes feeds on thi this energy that comes from the soul from this radiation from this pulse from this wish the soul has and takes that storyline that comes in the form of energy as potential energy and transforms it into kinetic energy in a way like mechanical force it's like takes the wave that comes from the soul and transforms it into a digital particles within the mind and this is how something is created out of nothing because it comes from here within the soul that wave is non-dual it's it's like woof. 
expanding and then the, the, the mind comes and takes that wave and transforms it digitalizes it into particles num numerous infinite particles like all these forms here it's just projections of the mind but they are not separate and nothing this is like the same wave it's, they are not separate it's just the, our mind in, interprets them as separate but they are not separate there is just the same wave of the soul being wrapped up in all these different forms and this is why they say everything is one yeah at the level of the soul everything is one and not even at the level of the soul it's so this is, can be so complex because the soul might not emit only one wave like yeah on this frequency or on, on this wavelength of the cosmos everything might be one the, everything we experience here might be part of the same wave but the soul can emit numerous other waves numerous other types of not only like parallel universes it's like completely like creations that have nothing in common with this one at all <laughs> the soul can create can have can can have running in parallel who knows how many number of waves and each wave is being translated by a corresponding mind into create uh, like unique individual creation so this here might be one type of creation one single wave creating all of this but the soul can have multiple other waves and it can go on like that in infinity is a small <laughs> a small concept to describe this it's it's beyond the magnitude of the soul is beyond what our minds can imagine but imagine that the soul itself is like a parasite parasite like like this is how it feels for me i don't know i might see it wrong like i'm not saying this is a truth but why i say the soul is a parasite is because all throughout th this entire creations that the soul can make marvelous creations like astonishing or horrible or doesn't matter is like why it feels that the soul is similar to a parasite is because all throughout these creations like you don't get a sense of awareness you don't get a sense that you're you're you know what the heck is happening like you're completely always in darkness you're completely yeah it's beautiful like you can be in the most astonishing cosmos like i don't know things unimaginable for our human minds like i don't know rainbow apples and who knows i'm just fabulating something but the the soul can imagine the most outstanding universes things that for our minds could seem like not even possible to believe that such amazing things can be true but even in those uh, most amazing things universes cosmoses it's like that sense of oh yeah you're staying there and you're wow but you're going like that wow like my rainbow rain and golden apples and singing rivers and who knows but you think like that because you actually don't know who you are this is why you're owing like that and <gasps> wow because you actually lack self-awareness it's like the soul is like this child that just wants to be admired you know just wants to be admired for its own creations just wants just like that child that says like mommy mommy look at me so or, daddy daddy look at me how i ride the bicycle or oh look at me how i can do that and that and that so the soul is like wanting the entire awareness of the spirit of the heart to to be all eyes on the soul all eyes there <gasps> wow what what have you created what have you done you know but it's like 
taking too much of that life. Like sometimes it takes so much life that the the, the being itself forgets who it itself is because the soul is so attractive. So it forgets its own awareness of self by involving that awareness into the creations of the soul that the soul can make. And this is the root of the pain because you can't take awareness away from the spirit without causing enormous pain because the spirit, something within, always remembers home, always remembers the true reality which is the spirit, which is the heart reality, let's call it in simple terms. So imagine you're playing a video game. As, mo as amazing that video game, as, as, as amazing as that video game can be, like it can be, I don't know, elephants pooping rainbows or anything, you being the prince of the cosmos or whatever, it's not really like whatever you see on the screen playing that video game, you're playing that video game and you're there with your hands on the laptop, you're still not feel that sense of realness as you feel when you're in this natural reality here, which might be even much more mundane, much more simple, much more normal, not so as outstanding as, as, as the word of the video, video game. But it's, but it's more real, more real, it's more true, more true independent, independent of how much they can be, it has that touch of, of trueness, trueness that, that, that for, for feeling, feeling nature, nature that only truth has to it. So, This is why the suffering, this is why suffering exists, because something within us knows that even though this creation here can be amazing or horrible or whatever, the fact that we think this is true home, the fact that we think this is reality, something within us knows, no, this is not reality. Like, this is not reality. You're confusing the video game for the reality. And, s and because you're making this confusion, you're missing what you always, like, something within you misses what can only be found in the natural reality. And that type, that signal, that, that missing signal that tells you, hey, you're confusing the video game with the reality, is what we call pain. So pain is nothing more than the reminder that we are under we have we have took the video game to be the reality we are under a misconception we are under a m mistake we, uh, of perception so we are under a mistaken perception and this is why it hurts because some part of us deeply misses reality there is something in reality that only exists there it can't be faked, it can't be created. It can't be created through any manifestation, through any creation as beautiful or as horrible as that creation can be, as magnificent and out of this world or terrible and horrific. There is something that only in the real world can be found and no, no creation can ever emulate it or simulate it or bring bring it or offer it in any way it's like the difference between making love to a real person and watching porn online it's like yeah you can watch it it's almost as if it was true but it's not as if the real thing so yeah you can watch creations you can be in creations you can create manifestations you can enjoy them but something within you knows that, yeah, well, mm, it's like a bitter taste, you know, like that aftertaste, like, well, yeah, well, it's so wonderful, but it's not exactly, it doesn't have that, that only f is found in the real reality, that extra thing, you know, and you, you can't find it in any creation, you can't, you, 
you can stay forever, eternities in creation, trying to better fine-tune the technology of creations, make it so, so real, undistinguishable from the real, and you'll still be missing that thing that that only exists in reality. So that's the root of suffering, that's the pain, because the pain is just the hunger that accumulates and builds up within a being as as it stays in creation longer. So it's a hunger for that thing that only exists in the natural true true reality. It's like a missing, it's like a missing a lover, missing something very, very deep, very, very profound, very, very energizing, life giving. It's like the body itself missing energy to exist. And you're missing like as much as we play in video games, in creations, and we stay there for eternities, we get hungry, we get deprived of true energy, of true meaning, of true trueness, that can only exist beyond the realm of the soul, beyond the realm of the human mind and beyond the realm of the soul, beyond this parasitic entity, which is the soul-mind entity. And they exist in the realm of the pure heart and pure mind, which they are the true organs of our being. The pure heart and the pure mind, that's where life actually is. And as we stay in these realms that the soul and the little mind, the soul and the virtual mind create together, we get something within us gets deprived, gets hungry, gets in pain. It's like it wants home. It can't stay like that forever. So as much as these creations here, the soul can play this, play these tricks to keep us, to keep the being, to keep the spirit, to keep awareness, basically, here in creation, another round and another round. And no, let, hey, let me show you this game or let me show you this new video game here. Oh, no, uh, don't, you don't like that one. Let me show you this one or maybe this one or maybe, oh, look. Look how amazing this one is, like the brand newest, it's like this one will be over the top, you, you need to check it out, it's like one time chance, only five spots left, don't get in now, we're gone, like we're starting it, you, you can only watch it from the exterior if you want, you will not be able to come in and later because we're starting it and then you can't hop in later because it's a storyline, we need to be there from the beginning, you know. <laughs> and um, all these catchphrases and selling points and oh the word of creation and the word of the soul is phew, enormously complex enormously nuanced and full of oh, a lot of things happening there uh, <laughs> But yeah, this is the root of pain. This is why we feel pain. Pain does not come from this reality. Actually, the soul has tried in many, many ways to extinguish pain, to to extinguish the feeling of pain, to, to come up with better and better creations, better and better video games, better and better drugs, in a way, to numb the feeling of pain that was building up within a being as it stayed more and more in, within creation. It created many number of tactics and ways to divert our awareness from the pain we were actually feeling. Um, it created many ways of diversion and distraction for us to not feel our own pain. And our own pain was the liberating source. It was the signal, it was the Ariadne's thread that could actually remind us something is wrong and could get us out. But if we numb our pain, then there is no way for us to tell what is reality anymore. There is no way for us to remember that there is a natural reality. And because we are missing that natural reality, we feel the pain that we feel. If we numb our pain, we, we have like thrown away the, the only key that we had with us. So the, the, the answer to all of this is within the pain we feel. That's our thread home. 
that's what shows us what we miss that's all what shows us what we lost what we left behind it's our own pain it's the Ariadne's thread that helps Theseus get out of the labyrinth it's the pain we feel it's our door out it's our door to our home it's our door to what we miss the most what we love the most what we seek the most it's our own pain that can bring us there So by the soul inventing so many other creations that could numb the pain, that could distract us from the pain, that could even lock down the pain. The pain was, in this specific creation right now, the pain itself has been portrayed as a monster. Oh, that's the least you want to feel. That's the least you want to experience. Don't go experiencing pain. No, no, you need, what are you like? You're, you're a masochist or what? Stay away as you can from your own pain. Don't question why the pain exists. It just happens when you do bad things that you shouldn't do, you feel that pain. So better stay away from the things that make you feel pain and better try to do other things that make you feel good. So this is how we locked, we thrown away our key. By trying to divert ourselves from our own pain trying to find ways to escape it by making the pain the devil oh what is the hell well hell is a realm in which you suffer eternally well that is heaven I think then because if there would be eternal suffering then that would mean it will be an eternal chance to understand and remember home to remember the true natural reality. So that would be heaven then. It would take me to heaven then. Hell. This is why I personally I never I, I found the reticence when I thought about hell. Like I didn't understood why hell was portrayed in this bad way like the fire consuming. Well that's purification of all these falsities. Of course fire feels bad. Of course hell feels bad and suffering because it's all the suffering and all the pain that we have accumulated and we feel deep within but we are hiding from so hell is nothing else than just this, this purification ground where all these falsities are burned out and we remember who we are this is why people were sent to hell right they, even the scripture they say they were sent to hell to purify themselves right and they were better persons and they would come out again into existence or something like that, right? So, we look around what we see. We see a world constructed out of a human world, I mean, not the nature, but the human world, we see a world constructed almost entirely at this moment of pain escaping mechanism just people trying to escape feeling pain in all in so many creative ways like i didn't i look at the society and all i see when people talk is like how can you help me not feel my pain oh this is how I can help you pretend you're not feeling pain. Here it is, a nice word. Here it is, a uh, hello, how are you, how is your day? Uh, oh, how nice are you dressed? Oh, thank you. Uh, you too. Oh, I know. Oh, thank you. You're so kind. And all this small talk that people do in the background, they're only saying, like, can you help me disguise myself from my own pain? Yes, I can do. Look, I'll tell you this word and you'll feel better. Okay, I will accept it. And I will, in return, I will return you the favor and I will try to make you feel, make you escape your own pain as well. So I will say to you this other word in return. Oh, okay, how nice. We will we'll just cover up from our own pain together. This is society. This is what society does. It's like, let's cover up from what hurts the most together. It's like, 
common delusion, man. And if you, anybody stands up and says anything, hey, you're here to suffer there. You're, you're actually... You're, you're feared to do this action because your deep pain is waiting. Like, have you have noticed you how, how you might feel trauma, trauma, you, trauma you might be depressed, 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 you might feel hurt, hurt. hurt. Oh, no, no, I'm fine. And, and I have, I have nothing. Why, why would you say, would you say I'm depressed? I'm depressed. Maybe, maybe it's your projection. projection. Maybe you're projecting this on me. Maybe you're depressed. So if anybody wants to stand up and say anything and tell to anybody, that hey you're just hiding away from something that really really hurts you and it's normal to hurt you and nobody knows how to deal with this hurt we don't know it's not our hurt as i said it's maybe inherited from this entire cosmos like nobody here is great nobody here is brave nobody here has the strength enough so at least let's Let's admit that we are in pain. Let's admit that we don't know the answer to this pain. Let's admit that pain is freaking painful and we don't know how to deal with it. And it puts us on our knees and we want to die and we want to crawl. And we want to just freaking extinguish ourselves from the face of this planet. Because we really, really feel afraid of that pain. And we don't know how to deal with it. But just at least let us recognize that. Let us tell that to one another. Let us admit how weak we feel and how vulnerable we actually are together. And that we don't know the answer. And that it's fine to not know the answer. But at least let us be true together then let us be false together. Let us try to find the answer together. But in order to find the answer we might first need to understand that we are in a big, big shit problem right now. We are in a deep, deep problem. We are in a deep, deep pain collectively as a human race right now. And this is, has not been going on in this present human era. From what I'm seeing, it has been going on from cycles of time. The human race was a race of pain. Even though some cycles might have been the heaven ones and some cycles might have been the terrible ones, there was always a pain of missing reality because creation is not reality. And because creation is not reality, there will always be pain in creation. So there seems to be a lot. To wake up on planet Earth, to see yourself under all this pain and even more, to somehow have this level of awareness, to be more awake in a way and to feel all this pain and to look around and to see that nobody freaking says anything about it and to s feel like what the heck is going on with these people how come they not that they don't talk about this pain but how come they make it seem like it's non-existent how come they want to make it seem like you're crazy because you're feeling it or there's something bad and wrong with you and you need to be locked down in a hospital or prison somewhere because you dare to show the pain that you actually feel. And to wake up and to have this level of awakeness and to see all other beings, like the even like the most precious beings, like you would es expect to be able to talk about these things, like family or close, close beings, friends, and to be, to f be f met with rejection and adversity and even seen as a threat this is how the world was in the past now i feel a bit more awareness is made on this subject and people try to work more and more and more and more and more consciously with their own pain and try to understand their own pain and the gift that the pain actually is and but for the longest time this was not true 
and to wake up on planet Earth and many beings have been in this state of coming here with their spirit having memories of true reality awaken in them and to feel themselves here in this reality was torture having that pure memory of what life actually is of truth what actually is but not being able to touch it nor feel it nor express it nor being believed if you expressed it nor express it to yourself even it's, it was like a maddening house really This is why I personally see that only really, really tough, really strong spirits could have really went through this. Because it was really a madhouse. To wake up as a true spirit here, with that true memory of home, with that pure heart activated within you, and still having that memory, you still know what true lo love or true home or true natural reality or that thing you still are in touch with that thing, we s you still know it, but you can't find it anywhere. You can't touch it, you can't sense it, you can't taste it, you can't hear it. It's like there is nowhere. And to be able to sort out this soul and this human mind, this parasitic thing that constantly creates and manifests things that make you feel more and more pain, and they don't, any creation that you make you doesn't make you feel good. You go on, you have the most, you met the most perfect person. You have the most one month of honeymoon period. You feel so in love, so pure. You, you think you ha you're home. You think for that month, oh my God, I'm home. This is home. This is she or he. This is what I always found, wanted. This is, this is everything. Or for other people, maybe they found the perfect job or the perfect house or the perfect place. Or And they think for a bit, a bit, length of time they think they found home they think they've touched that thing for a bit and after one month what happens all of a sudden as if no one knows how but it's like a card that flips on the other side and everything turns into hell the relationships gets destroyed the job goes away the place burns down who knows but the idea is that you get to understand deep within in an intuitive deep level that oh my god I got fooled so this was not it this relationship this job this place this house I thought this was home but actually I got fooled but you don't want to admit that to yourself so you continue searching the next thing maybe I got fooled with this one but I, I will maybe it's this other one Maybe I wasn't paying enough attention, but now I'll pay more attention and I'll find a better person, a better job. And so you're continuing to search, but it's not here. It's not in creation. It can't be found in creation because the thing that you're looking for exists within your s heart, within your spirit, which exists outside of creation. It's only in reality. You're searching for something that is non-existent in creation. You can't ever find it in creation it can be the most terrifying thing to accept this because then it's like but creation is all I know as a soul I, for eternities I have been creating with this soul what do I do now it's like creating panic and it's true you need to accept that no one knows we don't know the answer but we at least we accept the crap we are in we're like I don't know how to save myself. I don't know what's the answer. But at least I accept the crap and, or, that I mean. So, I don't know, maybe accepting the crap will just get me one step further into figuring out an answer. It's like, who knows the answer? But let's be honest together. Let's be true together. And maybe we'll find a way together. can be scary it can be scary to understand that the thing you're looking for the most it's not in anything that you could ever create and experience it's not in anything that you thought yourself to be so you need somehow to learn to die learn to get away from everything you 
thought yourself to be. That's almost like a death. Because if you, everything that you thought yourself to be was creation and the, your soul, and the thing that actually you, something within you wants the most, it's outside of that soul, then it's like letting go of the soul, letting go of your identity, and that means like a death. It's literally like a death. And who the freaking hell is not he scared of that? Because this is how this creation is created. To be scared of the thing that could lead you out of it. So you can avoid it, of course. You can avoid the door out. You can avoid the door to what you want the most. So it's normal to feel afraid. It's normal to reject this. It's normal to reject this truth. It's normal to reject your pain. But the thing is that rejecting pain will get you more pain because what you're looking for and that thing that you're missing and that feeling of missing will not change. You're always going to be missing that because that's a true thing. You're that feeling of missing, it's who you are. You're actually missing yourself. It's like you're playing a video games for 10 years. You're really missing who you are outside of the video game. Maybe you had lovers, maybe you had a life. You can't be in a video game for 10 years and not miss being in reality. So that feeling of missing will not go away, independent of how much you try to dispose of your pain or distract yourself or make the pain go away. You still not be able to escape your own love for your own self because that's what you're missing what you're missing is that natural feeling that you feel when you are in reality it's a thing that exists there and only there and that's what you're missing and that's not gonna go away even if you try to distract yourself from your pain so you can't fight yourself it's like fighting yourself a part of you wants to wants that thing, it misses that thing from the true reality and another part is scared to go there. And that's insanity. That's when two parts of the same self start fighting with one another. So, and one is going to lose because one is not real. And guess who that part, that unreal part is? It's a freaking soul. That's the unreal one. So we are all scared. No one knows what to do. It's all right. It's all right to feel scared. It's all right to not know what to do. But to be honest about that, to be honest within yourself, not to anybody else, because nobody else, everybody else is just, they're just too caught up in their own fear. So nobody in a way cares. But to be honest within your own self, to be vulnerable, to allow yourself to be vulnerable in your own self in f in to stand up vulnerable in front of your own self to stand up naked to your own self and admit to your own s your own self everything that you feel like the 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 weakness that you feel the the vulnerability that you feel the not knowingness the fear the scare the death fear everything needs to be allowed and admitted for your own self. That's the first step. Like we, you can't save yourself if you yourself do not admit you have a problem. Because then, then there, there is no there salvation, is no but then, but then, then you can suffer because, because, because the thing, the thing within you, within you that wants one reality still wants one reality. And from my experience, when we open up in this way, in true, pure vulnerability, in front of our own selves, so there is no external judger, there is no external person saying what is wrong or right for us. Only us, only us can decide that. Only us can decide to what level we feel pain, because maybe not all of us feel the same level of pain. Maybe some of us feel a bit of pain, 
but maybe some other maybe feel a lot of pain. So everything is personal. It's customized to the individual. So there is no external guru. There is no one externally that could tell you what is the right path for you. But standing naked, standing vulnerable, standing 100% purely naked in front of your own self, from my experience, in that rawness, pureness, like a naked baby child standing outside in nature, something can come up, a force from within you and save you. So you will, you can be able, there is this possibility from my experience, that a force from within the self comes and can save the self. A new, the new step can be offered when the self, this little self, composed of the soul and the mind, surrenders. Then the higher self, let's say, or the truer self, or the real self, can come and show the next step. Hey, okay, you want to come back? Here is the next step. So only you know, can know what's your next step. No one, th- th- there is no general formula for this. But there can be companions on this road so we can for people who need companions there can be companionship on this road you can team up with that with other beings who are walking the same inner path and even though you might go through different things you are walking the same in the same direction because home is only one legality is only one there are not multiple universes not There is only one single true real reality and that is home.